What is going on everybody? It's Trey from Half Street High Heat and today I am bringing you my official season predictions for 2023. First I'll start with the team based stuff like the division winners, uh, wild card winners, and the World Series champion and then I'll also get into some of the individual player awards like the MVP and Cy Young. So let us get started with the division winners. Okay, starting in the American League East, we have a pretty tough division. Uh, pretty much every team in the division is going to at least compete to a certain degree. In my opinion, I think it's gonna be a race between the Yankees, Rays, and Blue Jays. And I got the Yanks coming out on top. This is an extremely talented roster that won the division last year, and they're getting back some guys that might have not been fully healthy last year, like DJ LeMayhew, and they also added a Carlos Rodon to that rotation. They're also gonna probably have more of an opportunity for the young studs in their system, like Dominguez and Volpe, to have an impact on this squad, which I know Yankees fans are super excited for. For the AL Central, I've got the Cleveland Guardians. I really think this is gonna be a battle between the Guardians and Twins, although a White Sox bounce back isn't completely out of the cards. I see them as more of a 500 squad again. So I'm really looking at the Guardians and Twins matchup probably being the de determining factor for this division, and I like the Guardians head to head. I think the main difference between these two squads is organizational depth right now. The Guardians have a ton of pitching depth, a ton of player depth, and a great farm system, and they're gonna have guys coming up from that farm system making an impact this season. The Twins, on the other hand, they're injury prone, they don't have as much in the farm system, and they don't have as much pitching depth, so I'm a little bit worried that, like last year, what's gonna happen is they're gonna run out of gas, and Cleveland's gonna end up taking it. AL West, Astros, you know why. All right, the NL East, my division, sadly, at this moment, because this division is a bloodbath waiting to happen. Um, the Mets, they got way better this offseason. They added Kodai Senga out of the NPB. Uh, he is a huge X factor for that squad. They added Justin Verlander. He's obviously going to be a beast for them. Uh, and they have bolstered their bullpen as well. And they have also have some young guys coming up that will probably make an impact in Brett Beatty and Francisco Alvarez. In the Phillies, I mean, what didn't they do this offseason? They really improved that pitching in terms of their bullpen. A starting rotation is also already solid, and they put Taiwan Walker at the back end. I think that's a good signing as well. And I mean, Trey Turner. They added Trey Turner to an already really stacked lineup, so that Phillies team is going to be insane. And for all of these reasons, I'm going to pick the Atlanta Braves to win the division. What a twist! I mean, they obviously had the big move with Sean Murphy that added to their catching depth with Darno there. Uh, and they also uh, extended Spencer Strider. But really, it's just that young core coming together again, getting healthy, and competing again for this NL East division. And they always seem to come through. They always seem to play well when it matters most. And uh, they are also willing to go out in the trade market and make things happen, as we saw in their World Series year. So. I really can't bet against the Braves right now in this division, despite the fact that I honestly think Philadelphia probably has the best roster on paper in the division at this moment to me. National League Central, I have the Cardinals as my division winner. I think it's really just gonna end up being between St. Louis and Milwaukee. I, I think that the Cardinals are definitely the safe bet. I, Milwaukee has potential there. The Cubs actually also have potential uh, to, to make a little bit of noise. I'm not sure that they're quite there yet, but they've got a they've got an interesting squad as well. But uh, right now I'm gonna stick with the Cardinals. You know, they've still retained most of their guys and they pick up Wilson Contreras to really add some offense out of the catcher position that they have not had in a few years. So, so far you may be a little bit bored by my picks because I've gone with the previous year's winners and all five of them so far. But with the NL West, I'm gonna go with the San Diego Padres. I mean, the lineup itself features three MVP candidates on one team, like guys who legitimately could win the MVP this season on one team. And the Padres got way better by signing guys and also getting Tatis back. So I'm, I'm really leaning Padres here, guys. I really think that they're gonna be the team to beat in this division. And having said all of that, there is also the AL wildcard and the NL wildcard. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the AL wildcard teams. And in this order, I have the Rays, Mariners, and Blue Jays as my three squads that will make the playoffs along with the division winners in the American League. I said it before in a video this offseason, and I will say it again, I am not going to underrate the Tampa Bay Rays. This team always finds a way to be in the hunt or in the playoffs, 
and they were missing some of their really impactful players last year in their playoff run. Glass now is coming back. Wander Franco should be healthy. Brandon Lau should be healthy. So you add those three guys to an already really good team, a really deep organization, and they should be right back in the playoff hunt once again. As for the Mariners and Blue Jays, they're both really stacked teams. The Mariners in terms of their pitching, the Blue Jays more in terms of their lineup. And I think both squads are probably gonna repeat and make the playoffs once again. As for my National League wildcard squads, I have the Phillies, Dodgers, and Mets. But that's just how it is. I, I think that the National League East is the best division in the National League, and therefore they will get three squads in there, similar to how they did last year. It's gonna be the Braves, Phillies, and Mets once again. They're all gonna be really good, and they're all probably gonna win around 90 or more games. Still got the Dodgers in there, because even though I was a little down on them, uh, like I said earlier, they're still the Dodgers. They're still a really, really good squad, and they'll still be right in that hunt for the division. And if they don't win the division, they'll definitely make the wild card. And finally, I will quickly give you my World Series winner and prediction for the teams. I am going to be taking the San Diego Padres to win their first World Series ever. Now, this might be pushing it to a, a different level with the Padres hype, but uh, I really like this team. And I think if those three guys, I really think those three guys, it's Soto, Tatis, Machado, if they all have big years, they, can, they could carry this squad to a World Series win, and they don't even have to because that's a good, a good solid roster around them. So probably the safest bet is to pick the Astros, but I'm gonna go with the Padres here and just hope that my hype is not blinding me too much. All right, but let's go ahead and get into the individual player awards now, and I will start with the Rookie of the Year award. Rookie of the Year can be pretty hard to predict sometimes because, I mean, you never really know what these guys until they get here. Are, can they hang? However, I think on the National League side, the best bet right now is Corbin Carroll, and that's who I'm gonna take as well. The American League is a bit more of a toss-up. I mean, the main favorite would be Gunnar Henderson, and I get that, he's extremely, extremely good. But I actually am gonna go for Mashitaka Yoshida is who I'm going with. I think the main question is if he can just adjust to Major League pitching well enough, and I honestly believe that he will. I think he's gonna end up being a good player and uh, having a chance at that Rookie of the Year. Okay, for the MVP and Cy Young, I'm actually gonna do something a little bit different. So we also will have an article going up on our website, link in the description, halfstreethighheat.com, with all the predictions from all of our writers that uh, participated in this. So the first things first, I'll go ahead and go with my picks. So for the American League MVP, I'm going with Otani. He can do both stuff which makes him good. Also going into a contract year, I don't really think that matters to him that much like it would for other guys, but uh, you know, he is going into a contract year, maybe he wants to even put on a bigger show than he has been. Bigger show, SHO. As for the rankings, three for Shohei Otani, three for J-Rod, one for Jordan, one for Judge, one for Trout, and one for Jose Ramirez was the other one. Um, so I like all those picks really uh, for, for Judge. The reason why, and I think the reason why we only have one vote for Judge is just due to the fact that it's really difficult to repeat. That's just kind of my logic there. I still like Judge a lot. He's an unbelievable player, but that's kind of the logic I followed. And I'm pretty sure that's the logic most of us followed there. It's just hard to repeat, it just is. So for the National League, the MVP candidacy is a little different. Um, you don't have to pick between 11 F4 Judge and Otani doing double duty. So. In a sense, it's a little easier, but it's also a little harder because it's, there's less clear-cut choices. Uh, so for me, I ended up going with Juan Soto again this year. I believe I went with him last year as well. It's just once he puts that that full season together of that 2021 hitting, then you're going to see him win the MVP because he gets on base at such a ridiculous rate. He had a down year last year, and a down year would be a freaking career year for most guys. So if he has an up year, and gets to like 90% of his full potential, you could see him, you know, take this MVP. As for the rankings for the rest of the writers, once again, 10 votes, including my own. Four for Soto, one for Acuna, two for Manny Machado, two for Fernando Tatis, and Trey Turner even gets a shout out from Nick. I really like that pick actually, because Trey Turner hits extremely well at the bank. In my opinion, the American League Cy Young race comes down to one factor. If DeGrom pitches the whole season, he will win the award. If he does not, all hell will break loose. But at the end of the day, injuries happen, underperformance happens even with a guy that could be the best pitcher in baseball. 
So you never know, and I think that uh, that factored into some of our other writers' votes here. So we have three for DeGrom, two for Dylan Cease, one for Carlos Rodon, one for Framber Valdez, one vote for Shohei Otani, one vote for Shane McClanahan, and we also had one vote for Alec Manoa. After DeGrom, there's a lot more parity there. It's just, if DeGrom's healthy, I really think it's going to be him. And the National League is also full of a big pool of guys that could win it. I don't think there's a clear-cut dominator like in the American League right now, but there is a lot of really good talent here. And for me, I'm going to go ahead and give it to a Philadelphia Philly. Aaron Nola is going to win the award. Aaron Nola, at this point in his career, has already had multiple seasons with Cy Young caliber pitching. It seems like he's just missing out slightly because some other guy has just some dumb season. Uh, it also doesn't help that his defense has not helped him out, and obviously his discrepancy between his ERA and FIP is kind of noticeable, especially uh, the last two seasons. But he's already a guy that gets the innings. He's already a guy that is an extremely efficient pitcher. He does not walk that many batters. I believe he led the league in walks per nine last year with like one per nine, which is insane. I really like Nola here, despite the fact that he's a Philly. Uh, we actually had one, more, one other vote uh, besides me for Nola, so Nola with two. Corbin Burns coming in with two votes, and the rest of these guys all had one vote. Max Fried with one, Zach Gallen with one, Spencer Strider obviously got another got a vote as well. Julio Urias and Justin Verlander also had one vote. So wait, that's too many votes. I miscounted. Oh, there was three for Corbin Burns. Okay, three for Corbin Burns. So he's the leader. Uh, so yeah, anyways, all of these will be wrong by the end of the season. Can't wait to come back and check this out and just be completely stupid and feel stupid and look stupid. But anyways, this, this video is getting too long now, so I'm going to end it. I actually really like that as an under-the-radar choice. Maybe if you're trying to get some good odds somewhere, check out Trey Turner's odds. Um, but yeah, let's move on to Cy Young. This is taking so long. I'm going to have to cut, like so much of this.